concerning da'wah, and this is something that we all need to reflect upon, those involved in da'wah. We all know the story of the Jewish ghulam, the Jewish boy who used to serve the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then he fell ill. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam visited him, and he stood over his head, and he told him, Aslim, فَنَظَرَ الْوَلَدُ إِلَىٰ أَبِيهِ فَقَالَ لَهُ أَبُوهُ أَطِعْ أَبَا الْقَاسِمِ أطيع أبا القاسم فخرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الحمد لله الذي أنقذه من النار أن حديث زم بخاري. This Jewish boy who used to serve the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fell ill and the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم visited him. Now listen to this now. He visited him because this was da'wah. Not that he's trying to honor a disbeliever as many people do today. They go to the opposite extreme. Say so we we respect all religions. Brother, we don't respect this belief. I don't know since when does a Muslim respect someone who says Allah has children, or Allah is a cow, or Allah is some animal that they worship in the street. I don't know since when we had respect for someone in this particular status. So we don't want to kind of, you know, play games here. We respect a human being because Allah had honored Bani Adam. And we treat them in honor and respect because we want to bring them to Islam. But we don't twist things around and say we respect someone who disbelieves in Allah, whom Allah will put in Jahannam forever. Say, well, I respect him. No, we don't. So his visitation, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was strictly da'wah. And the evidence is when he visited him, he didn't bring him some flowers and chocolate and say, have a good day, and he went back home. He stood over his head and he told him, Aslim, embrace Islam. He had that authority, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, this is among the most amazing stories in the world. His father was what? A Jew. A Jew, and he told his, his son when, when the Prophet ﷺ told him embrace Islam, the son looked at his father, you know, seeking permission. I mean, this is a father, you can't act with, in the presence of your father without any direction from him. You know what his father told him? He said, Obey Abu al Qasim. This is his kunya, his nickname. Obey meaning the Prophet. ﷺ. And the boy embraced Islam. The Prophet ﷺ left the house saying, All oh, praise is due to Allah who saved him from the hellfire. The Jewish man knew that the messenger of Allah was the messenger of Allah. Otherwise, would he let his son embrace a religion which will take him to Jahannam before he dies? Impossible. If he truly believed that Judaism huh, was the true religion, would he let his son change his religion before he dies? Impossible. But he knew. But it was business. It was a dunya. And this is the case with many priests and preachers and many people in the world. They know. They know in the depth of their hearts, Islam is the religion of Allah. But losing some of their worldly status conflicts with them embracing Islam. So these are the ones whom Allah spoke about that they favor the life of the dunya over the akhirah. That's what it is. They know, but they enjoy the dunya. They like the, the fast one. This, this fast life. Al-ajila. The transitory life. They prefer it over the akhirah, so they reject. So the Prophet ﷺ was what? Visiting a young man, a young boy, who was on the verge of death, who had served him before, to give him da'wah. His, this was his concern. And of course, if we were to deal with the da'wah alone, we would need lectures. He used to go stand in, 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 among the people, say, may, may ya'wini, who will take me, who will protect me, who will help me, so I may convey the risala of my Lord, the message of my Lord. He would go to Ta'if sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he will be hurt and harmed. He will be cursed, accused of being a liar, a mind reader, a fortune teller, a magician, all kinds of things. This was his concern about the kuffar, that they embrace Islam. And when the mountain, when the, when the angel of mountains came and said, If you wish, I will, I will crush, crush them with the two mountains. He said, no, but I ask Allah that he will bring from their loins People who worship Allah alone and associate no partners with Him. This was his concern over their humanity in purpose, in, in general. He was only sent as mercy to the people. So those involved in da'wah, or those who have not yet involved themselves in, in, themselves in da'wah, what are you waiting for? Muslims need da'wah today more than anyone else in the world. Muslims need da'wah, our family members need da'wah, the closest people to us need da'wah. And the disbelievers need da'wah as well. 
And if we want to follow his footsteps, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we need to be keen on conveying his deen the same way he was keen on conveying the deen of Allah. Otherwise, we're not truly following him. And da'wah has become so easy today, it's not even a joke. With the internet, and the DVDs, and the audio CDs, and the tapes, I mean, it's, it's, the list can go on. You, airplanes, everything is facilitated. Back then, none of these means were available.